I'm sure you would agree that finding truth in this last hour is like walking through the desert in search of water. In less than a month after uploading the dark portal of New Year's Eve and reaching a quarter million people, YouTube has flagged the video and given us seven days to remove it under the threat that if we don't, they will remove it themselves and give us a strike on the channel. It appears that those in high places don't want this truth to go any further. But little did they know that this attack would be used as a footstool because the information that has been added to this video that we have edited so we could re-upload it once again is not only going to shock you but when you see how these dots connect together you truly will know that the whole world is a stage. I've done so many terrible things, but what we are doing is right. Did you, did you just say right? Brown people, white people, Jews. I assume you're referring to Carver's supposed paper on eugenics. But Carvel was misunderstood. Yeah, just like Hitler. He wasn't talking about race, he was talking about survival. We've now passed seven billion on this planet. When I was born, it was a little over two. Food prices are rising, oil is ending. When our resources end in 20 years, given everything that we know of our species, do you really think we're going to just share so your answer to that is some kind of genocide? No, it is not. It is not genocide. Our answer to this is Janus. Our answer to this is Janus. Our answer to this is Janus. Janus consists of a protein and an amino acid. Independently of each other, they're harmless. But when they're brought together in the subject, they act as a genetic trigger that prevents chromosomal division. The cell targeted can no longer replicate itself and is thereby rendered useless. The change is permanent and hereditary. But you know what I see, Wilson? A planet turned into a desert. A thousand million souls starving, dying. And we can stop this with Janus. And we can stop this with Janus. So let me ask you a question. What would be the odds that in September of 2020, Hollywood would release a series called Utopia? where those at the top that take orders from the dragon would bewitch the masses to be so afraid of a plague on the earth that they would beg for the sorcery. They would beg to be bitten by the serpent only to be drawn in as a pawn in the chessboard of deception. And it just so happens to be that this demonic plan, this secret project would be called Janus. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a whole lot of blue and yellow symbolism in the trailer of this show playing on the screen right before your eyes. And if you have been following the series 
the whole world is a stage then you already know what I'm talking about and you already know how they operate using the power of lesser magic but I guess some may say this is all a coincidence and there really is no in the world isn't really a stage but what if it all does truly connect that the dragon wants to be like the most high and if you know anything about the most high god from studying the old and new testament he is very particular accurate and detailed about what he does and what he plans and if lucifer wants to be like the most high then he would also leave a trail of moldy breadcrumbs when it comes to the plans and the moves that he will make on the chessboard of deception. In this re-edited and re-uploaded documentary, we will show you how these things all connect way more than we thought. And by the enemy forcing us to take down the original documentary, it has been used as a footstool to backfire in the face of the dragon because now this video is re-uploaded with more information that will not only shock you but show you how these dots truly connect way deeper than you think. So if you have never seen this documentary, I encourage you to pray to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Almighty, for him to open up your understanding so you can see the truth, to get a notepad and a pen and take notes and have your word laid out before you and prepare yourself because what you're about to see is very shocking. And for those who have already seen this documentary, I would recommend you watch it again from the beginning. But for the respect of your time, I am going to put on the screen a timestamp where you can fast forward to to get the new updated information that will connect not only Janice to the abomination and why Hollywood use this lesser magic in this TV show called Utopia connecting Janice to a snake bite that the world would beg for that would ultimately destroy them and how the 12 Caesars that were raised up by the dragon to be his 12 disciples also have a connection to the plan of the abomination in this last hour you can fast forward to the timestamp on the screen. So before we begin the original documentary with the updated information, I highly encourage you, if you are wise, please pause the video, go into the description box, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our backup channel as well as our Rumble page. Brothers and sisters, it is very wise of you to do this because there are videos with knowledge that YouTube will not allow to be uploaded on this platform. So it is very wise of you to have these other platforms to keep in touch with us and it would be foolish not to take this advice. We love you all so much. With that being said, we will begin the original video with the updated information. Help spread this message to as many as you can. We love you all so much, and we thank you for standing by our side in this last hour. If you had anything to do with the celebration of New Year's Eve, you need to watch this whole video and make sure you do the prayer at the end. And I pray that in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Almighty, that your eyes will be opened and you will see the truth.
Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Most of you are saying, man of God, now I know you're trying too hard. I mean, come on. It's just the beginning of a new year. It seems like anything I try to do in the world, you got something to say about it. Well, brothers and sisters, please remember that the word says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. That means you could literally be rejected by the Lord because of things you did that you weren't supposed to do. Because of things you did not know. New Year's Eve. Sadly, a time when billions upon billions of people blindly stagger their way into what they think is the new year. But today we're going to expose another branch on the satanic tree of Mystery Babylon. You see, there is a very ancient ritual that is done during the New Year's, what you call celebration I call an ancient ritual. 
Now many of you know by now, one of the foundational warnings that we have been giving you from the Lord during these documentaries, like the whole world is a stage series, is that mystery Babylon is the uniting together of all the world's religions under one banner. This is the great stumbling block of the dragon that is cast before the feet of mankind. You see, the devil's agenda is to get the Lord to be provoked to anger against you. He knows that we are made in the image of God. And he can't stop us when we are serving Christ. So what he does is what he did in the days of Israel. Remember Jesus warned us in the book of Revelation. That in the days of Balaam and Balak. That stumbling block was to cause Israel to sin and commit idolatry. That means to get involved in the practices of pagan religions and he knew that by doing this it would provoke the Lord to anger and he would lift his hand off of Israel why do you think Jeremiah was crying out in the streets day and night he knew that because of the evil ways that because of the idolatry of Israel that because of the idolatry of his people the king of Babylon would actually have legal ground to not only invade but carry them away to Babylon and please remember at this very moment all the people were boasting that this is the city of God that cannot be touched by the enemy but yet the enemy was on the way so we're here to warn you about these things so that way you do not provoke the Lord God to anger remember Mystery Babylon is the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. It is the unification of all false religions and every demon that comes with them. And every occult ritual, curse, and demon that comes with them. Ancient fallen ones. This thing, this is not a game brothers and sisters. So before we expose this mystery of New Year's Eve and you see it for what it is in this demonic portal and I show you what this demonic portal does we must first go back to Genesis. Remember when God prophesied that it would be by the seed of the woman that Satan's head would be crushed but yet a woman doesn't have a seed. A woman has an egg. So we know very well this is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. But brothers and sisters, all throughout the Bible, there are the prophecies of the Messiah. Little nuggets of details on when he would come, on the things that he would do, and even the time frame he would come to the earth one in particular that I want to brush upon is the book of Daniel the reason why the scroll of Daniel is so hated by the world is because of the accuracy of the prophecies with detailed precise descriptions of kings that literally did rise and fall and if you don't know about this you need to do your research study to show yourself approved unto God 
And I'm not going to go into great detail because you should know about one of the greatest prophecies of Jesus Christ that Daniel gave us. That was given to us. And it was by the prophet Daniel. A servant of God. And he gave a precise time frame on when Jesus Christ would come to the earth. And the signs that would follow to know the season. And to the T, it was precisely fulfilled. But brothers and sisters, have you ever considered that that old serpent, the dragon, is a studier of God's prophecies? Do you think as thousands of years went by that Lucifer wasn't worried, concerned, or watching for these prophecies? To come to pass? Of course he was. You do know that old serpent, the dragon, studies the word. This is very clear. You can read this when Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior, was fasting in the wilderness, in the desert. Did not Satan quote from the word of God? And if he quoted from the word of God, that means he has studied the word of God. He wasn't studying the word because he loves the Lord. But because in his worldly system, it is a great chessboard of deception. And he was trying constantly day and night to make moves to try to get ahead of the Messiah. He knows he can't beat God. But he's aiming at beating God's people. So he strategically puts up moves throughout the decades, throughout the years. He has been strategizing plans, even chess moves that would be a hundred years ahead, a thousand years ahead, two thousand years ahead. By raising up these pagan religions in hopes to confuse the masses and serve false gods rather than the true and living God. So as he is making his moves on his chessboard of deception, he was looking out for the signs of the coming of the Messiah. I said all that to say this. What would be the odds? I mean, think about the wise men that followed after the star that glorious lighted body in the sky and followed that glorious light right to the very feet of the Messiah just born in the earth just born brought to the earth as a baby did not the ruler did not Herod tremble? Did he not want to know about the Messiah? Remember, Satan slaughtered the firstborns in the days of Moses. And he did it again in the days of Christ. Because he was literally terrified. And got so desperate to the point he thought he could kill the Messiah. To stop the prophecy from coming to pass. But of course he failed. But I needed you to see. I just wanted you to go on a brief walk with me. To see. How long Satan has been playing this game of chess. And although. This is just but a small video. In the whole world is a stage series. But this is a revelation that the most high gave me that I must release to all of you. And thank God you're watching this right now. And the reason we went on that journey is so that way you can look back into history and see the moves that are being played on the chessboard by the dragon. To know your enemy's future, you must study his past. And before we talk about New Year's Eve, we must go back to when it began. 
Remember that the axe is laid at the root of the tree. I want you to take a walk with me way back before Jesus Christ came to the earth. You see, before Jesus Christ came to the earth, there was a wicked man by the name of Julius Caesar who took control in 48 BC. You see, the Roman Empire was not ruled by the emperor, but by two consuls who were elected by the citizens of Rome. Before him, Rome was then known as a republic. But brothers and sisters, I don't know if you caught what I just said. What would be the odds? You mean to tell me that right before Jesus Christ comes to the earth, the dragon would switch up and place a man on a throne who would be exalted as a god by the name of Julius Caesar. Brothers and sisters, remember earlier when I told you how Satan was watching prophecy throughout the years, waiting for the signs that are written in the word to come to pass so he could try to prepare to fight against the Messiah. Do you think it is a coincidence that right before Jesus Christ comes to the earth, the dragon would change the way things were done in Rome. You see, before Julius Caesar took control in 48 BC, the Roman Empire was not ruled by the emperor, but by two consuls who were elected by the citizens of Rome. At that time, Rome was known as a republic. But all of a sudden, the dragon would switch up in a panic. I mean, you can only imagine how the dragon trying to figure out the prophecies of Daniel but couldn't accurately estimate it to the exact day and hour would raise up a king on a throne in the very season that Jesus Christ would be born from the womb of a virgin that God Almighty would walk among us in the flesh. Do you think that is a coincidence? Can't you see that the dragon was raising up this king to change times and laws to wage a war against the son of man. The reason why I'm showing you this is because it connects because it's all going to connect together as we expose this ancient occult ritual to open up a demonic portal to curse those who participate in Mystery Babylon. Julius Caesar messed with the calendar and established January 1st as the beginning of the new year circa 46 BC dedicated to a false god named Janus. This two-faced false god whose spirit inhabited doorways and arches. Are you listening? January had a very special significance for the Romans. Believing that Janus symbolically looked backwards into the previous year and ahead into the future. And the Romans offered sacrifices to the deity and made promises of good conduct for the coming year. Now, brothers and sisters, you have to ask yourself the question, out of all the false gods, why would Julius Caesar, led by the dragon, raise up Janus to be honored and glorified for the beginning of the year? Remember, the Bible says that the Antichrist seeks to change times and 
laws. And brothers and sisters, do I really have to stop and explain to you that January is not the beginning of the year according to the word of the Lord? So if it's not the beginning of the year according to the God we serve, why would you have anything to do with it to begin with? Now, I know we are in the world, but we are not supposed to be of the world. Because a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So I truly believe that the devil, trying to figure out prophecy, raised up this Caesar as a means to try to fight the Messiah as he entered into this dimension. Are you starting to see it now? I mean, think of the accuracy. What would be the odds, brothers and sisters? And why choose Janice? Well, first off, let's talk about a few things. There are actual coins depicting the face of Janice and the door of Janus, even on the very coins of Caesar. This is literally a fact. Even before the Lord God Messiah came to the earth, there were already coins operating through society with buying and selling from Rome all the way into Jerusalem. During the days of Moses, the Messiah was not only fighting the dragon himself seated in the heart of Pharaoh, seating in the temple of Pharaoh, Jesus Christ the Messiah was also fighting the gods of Egypt. Now I'm not going to get into it in this video. You can watch our video called In Paganism We Trust. Jesus Christ through Moses fought the top 10 gods of Egypt and every plague that was released through Moses was a direct strike against the gods of Egypt. You understand? What if I told you that when Jesus Christ came to the earth, he was not only waging war against Satan himself, seated in the heart of Caesar, but he was also fighting against the gods of Rome. Are you seeing it now? And there's many times when Jesus Christ is talking about certain things. He was letting the people know, I am the true way. I am the true door. I am the true God. That all these false gods that were worshipped in Rome. And that, that mystery Babylon spirit was spreading even in Jerusalem. Jesus Christ came to let it be known that none of those gods could stand against him. And that they have illegally tried to take his titles and position. And you see, devils were trembling when they were caught by surprise being casted out of the temples of men because they knew and understood this is Christ. So these false gods that the dragon would place and set up to be worshipped had different features, names, and titles that he would give them. But if you know what the word says, that when the people would worship these false gods, they were really worshiping the dragon and the principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. They were worshiping and offering up to devils. Offering sacrifices to devils. Are you starting to see it now? Now we have a lot we have to go over. We have to talk about the 12 months of the year. Although we will be focusing on January, I want to expose a satanic message hidden within the lineup 
of the 12 months. Remember, everything is to wage war against the Messiah and the people of God. Make no mistake about it. So there is a strategic reason why the dragon, out of any time in history, would raise up a Caesar, a demigod to be worshipped right before the Messiah would be born and change times and laws and give homage to a Roman deity by the name of Janus to bewitch the minds of people and cause confusion. But I want you to, but I'm going to play a video and I want you to hear what is said about this false god. Really, this principality and we'll be right back today i'm bringing you a video on janus a purely roman god as he has no great counterpart is a god of a great many things and i mean many things he was the god of gates passageways doorways all between places beginnings endings time duality conflicts transitions birth journeys trading exchange and even shipping death morning as in the time of day he was also the god of the middle areas between rural and urban spaces adulthood and youth and civilization and the uncivilized because he is the god of beginnings and endings he was said to be able to see the past and future and was invoked at the beginning of the sowing and harvest periods at marriages and births but also at deaths he was a very important deity indeed when he is depicted in art, sculpture and literature, he is said to have two faces. One would be youthful and clean-shaven, and the other older and bearded. It is said that Janus was there at the very beginning of the world as he guided the gates of heaven, and was there as religion was formed and oversaw the start of the gods. In his time, he was referred to as Deum Deo, the god of gods, and he was the very first in the Roman pantheon. It is also said that January was named for him, his main symbols are a staff and a key, and he has a few other names. There's Ianus Bifrons, meaning two-faced, Ianus Quadrophons, meaning Janus four-faced, and Ianus Pater, meaning Janus father. And as you can guess, he can also be called Janus rather than Janus. He is said to have no parents, or to be the offspring of Terra and Calus, who were primordial beings, and his siblings are listed as Saturn, Ops and Camis, who in some stories also became his partner. He fathered Tiberinus, Aethex, Fontus, Olistine, and Canius. Since he had none of his own priests, like most other gods did, he was said to carry out his own ceremonies, and as he was the Rex Sancronum, or King to the Sacred Rites, would be present at all of them. The doors of homes were called Ianua, and he presided over stepping in and out of them and covered passageways were Iani, and he guards the terminus at the Sororium Tegilium, the way into Rome from Latium. A temple to Janus was then built at the Forum, and the doors are left open when Janus is needed to assist in times of war. Are you telling me that this Roman deity, who they said had no match, there was no Greek gods that could match him, was called the God of Gods. He was called the beginning and the end. He was called the God of Doors. He was known to have the keys within his hand. And even on coins with Caesar, Janus would be on the other side depicted as the door. He was called the way and the path. And it was said that they couldn't get to any other gods except they go through Janus. Can't you see that the very titles reserved for the great almighty Messiah were given to this false demon god, Janus. And it just so happens to be that the dragon would 
place a demigod king on the throne in Rome. And then Julius Caesar would change the calendar and put Janus out of all the Roman gods that he could choose from, false gods. He chose Janus, being inspired and directed by the dragon. So those blinded by mystery Babylon were deceived into worshiping this false god, Janus. But I want us to go through the titles and expose the agenda that's been hidden right in between the lines of history for over 2,000 years. Notice that Janus is called the beginning and the end. But Jesus Christ said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Notice that, notice that one of the titles of Janus is that he is the door. But Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10 verse 9, I am the door. You see that? And by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. It is said that Janus had all power over time. But in Matthew 28, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He is the ancient God of time travel. Jesus Christ has authority of time. Notice that in the pictures of this false god Janus, he's holding keys. It is said that he has the keys of all doors. But Jesus Christ said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 19, he says that I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and remember what I told you that in Rome Janus was worshipped as the door and the only way to other gods they called him the path or the way and that it was only through him that they could get to those other demon gods well I know that my Bible says in John chapter 14 verse 6 Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father but by me are you starting to see why the dragon chose to put this Caesar on the throne right before the Messiah would be born and that operating through this Caesar would change times and laws and raise up this false god named Janus that just so happened to be called many of the titles that rightly belong to the Messiah at the same time. Did I not tell you the whole world is a stage? Now notice in these pictures, this false god is depicted having two faces. One that looks into the future and one that looks into the past. And they believe that Janus was at the beginning and end of everything from life and death to marriage to peace and war. Once again, trying to rob God of his rightful positions, committing blasphemy and abominations on the earth. Now in Roman pagan mythology, Janus was the husband of Kamasin, a nymph, and the two had a son 
named Tiberinus. It was from Tiberinus that the river Tiber gained its name. Prior to that, the river was known as Albula. Following Tiberinus's death in the river or on its banks, however, the name was changed. You see? I want you to remember that for a little bit later. Why was Janus such an important god to the Romans? The Romans regarded Janus as an important god, which is evident in one of his titles, Divum Deus, which means the God's God. Before a sacrifice could be made to any of the other deities, Janus would first be invoked and a libation would be poured out for him. The rationale for this is that since Janus was the doorkeeper to the heavens, it was through him that all the other gods and goddesses may be reached. Are you starting to see why the dragon chose to raise up Caesar and through Caesar change times and laws and rearrange the calendar and place Janus at the very beginning? It is very evident why this false god Janus was chosen. But did you know that some scholars regard Janus as the god of all beginnings and believe that his association with doorways is a derivative? He was invoked as the first of any gods in regular liturgies. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says, that in the beginning was the word, not Janus. In the beginning was Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Are you starting to see the bigger picture? But I want you to think about something very logically. The pictures that you're seeing on the screen are actual ancient coins that even predate when the Messiah came to the earth. Now I want you to see the pictures that are on the screen. These are coins with the image of Janus or the representation of Janus. These coins were actually in circulation of buying and selling when the Messiah came to the earth. I want you to think about that for a moment. Jesus Christ, let it be known. I am the door, not Janus. I am the way, not Janus. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, not Janus. And have you considered that it could be possible that the very money Judas betrayed the Messiah to get could have had the image of Janus on it. But now we must move on to the next level of this message. I want you to listen carefully to when it comes to the temple of Janus. The worship of Janus traditionally dated back to Romulus in a period even before the actual founding of the city of Rome. There were many Janai, i.e. ceremonial gateways in Rome. These were usually freestanding structures that were used for symbolically auspicious entrances or exits. Particular superstitions were attached to the departure of a Roman army for which there were lucky and unlucky ways to march through a Janus, you see? So when they would actually march through this archway, this gateway, they believed they were going through this principality named Janus, this demon. The most famous Janus in Rome was the Janus Geminus, which was actually a shrine of Janus at the north side of the forum. It was a simple rectangular bronze structure with double doors at each end. Traditionally, listen carefully, the doors of this shrine were left open in time of war 
but they were kept closed when Rome was at peace. According to the Roman historian Livy, the gates were closed only twice in all the long period between Numa Pomphilius, 7th century BC, and Augustus of the 21st century BC. Did you hear that? So this temple, the doors would remain open when there was war, but they were shut. I want you to remember that as we dive into the next segment of this video. The hidden satanic message within the names of the 12 months. Now, brothers and sisters, you know now the main point of this study is on January and the New Year's ritual and the lifting up and implementation of this principality, false god Janus. So after January, which is dedicated to Janus, you had February. Now this was different because it represented an occult purification ritual where the pagans would go through a whole purification process offering up sacrifices to the gods of Rome. March was dedicated to Mars, the god of war. Now when we say the god of war, we're talking about to the pagans, we know that they are false gods. We know that they are demons receiving worship to the dragon. But April was a was dedicated to Aphrodite and Venus and it literally means to open the portal. I want you to remember that. May represented the goddess Maya. May was dedicated to Maya the earth goddess. June was dedicated to Juno, the goddess of women, childbearing, and marriage. July, listen to this carefully, was dedicated to Julius Caesar, and he was lifted up as a god. August was dedicated to Augustus Caesar, we're going to talk about him a little bit later. But he also was lifted up as a god. And he was the one that was actually ruling when Jesus Christ came to the earth. He was the one who took the place of Julius Caesar. In fact, many say he was the first official Caesar. But here's where it gets interesting. September is from the word septem, meaning seven. October is from the word octo, meaning eight. November is the word novum, meaning nine. And December is from the word decem, meaning ten. Think of how foolish this is. That on the Gregorian calendar, September, which means seven, is the ninth month. October, which means eighth, is the tenth month. November, which means nine, is the eleventh month. And December, which means ten, is the twelfth month. Brothers and sisters, this is not logical any way you look at this. It's utter foolishness. But now let us see the hidden occult message within the lineup of the 12 months of the year. Janus, this false god of doors, and they say he is the only way you can get to the other gods. That by baptizing the people into Janus to start off the year, they would enter in through a ritual of purification, you see? But meaning February and then March means Mars, which is the God of war. Remember what I told you earlier that the doors of Janus were only open during war. They were always shut 
during a time of peace. Notice that right after March, which means war, April means to open the portal or the doors. You see? Are you starting to see the message? May represents the earth goddess. This is the bringing forth of the temples for the beast to use to set up his earthly kingdom. Because man is made from the dust of the earth, you see? June is the goddess, is dedicated to the goddess of women, marriage, and, and childbirth, fertility. This is talking about that from May to June, the earth goddess would bring forth a man child. July meaning Julius Caesar that from the earth will rise up a temple by the name of Julius Caesar and following him Augustus the very ruler that would be alive during the time when the Messiah would be born into the earth. In September, October, November is a representation of mystery Babylon because Babel, Babel means confusion is it not confusion brothers and sisters to call september which means seven nine to call october which means eight ten november nine to eleven december which means ten twelve is this not confusion so if we read it as a sentence the mystery says this that through Janus, those who participate in Mystery Babylon will enter through an occult purification ritual being offered up to false gods. And that through March, Mars, the god of war, will allow the door and portal to, be, to remain open. You see? And from the earth goddess and the goddess of women, marriage, and childbirth the dragon setting up his temples because remember you have no choice but to also add all the popes into this equation you see so this represents the 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 building up of earth temples you know human beings that the dragon could seat himself into to operate on the chessboard of deception and do his bidding on the earth. Are you seeing it now? But remember earlier I told you that Augustus, that after Julius Caesar, Augustus reigned as a demigod and ruler in Rome when Jesus Christ came to the earth. But approximately 14 years of Jesus Christ being on the earth Augustus was replaced with Tiberius and this was the very Caesar that would be reigning from Rome when Jesus Christ our Lord and God was crucified and died for our sins and rose from the dead but as I was meditating on this what would be the odds that Augusta, who was, the, who was the ruler when Jesus Christ came to the earth, his name would mean great, magnificent, and even holy to the people. And we know that Satan exalts himself and is as an angel of light. So he wants to be like the Most High. So it would only be obvious that the ruler during the time when Jesus would come to the earth from the dust of the earth a temple would be made for the dragon and they would lift him up as a great magnificent holy demigod you see blasphemy but I want to focus on Tiberius who was the Caesar and the ruler after Augusta died. Now I want you to think about this. Tiberius was the very temple the dragon was operating through at the same time while Jesus Christ was on the earth healing the sick, 
telling the people to repent, gathering up his disciples, and eventually dying for us. This was the very temple that the dragon was seated in. But guess what this ruler's name meant? This person that was lifted up as a demigod. Tiberius is of the Tiber River that runs through Rome. The one that you could throw a rock at from the Vatican. But I started to meditate on this. Tiberius was of the river that runs through Rome. But wait a minute, brothers and sisters. Remember earlier, what was the name of the son of this false god Janus? Do you remember? The name of their son was Tiberinus, who died by the river that runs through Rome. And they dedicated this river to the son of Janus. What would be the odds? Look at this now. Jesus Christ is the river of life that runs through the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the living water from heaven. He is the river of life. What would be the odds that the dragon would establish this kingdom with a demigod ruler on the throne just before the Messiah would come to the earth? They would raise up this false god Janus as the beginning of the calendar year, the Gregorian calendar of the year. And that during the life of Jesus Christ, there would be another Caesar, another ruler that would rise up as a earthly temple for the dragon. And his name just so happened to be Tiberius, the very name dedicated to Janus. And his name would mean, and his name would represent the river that runs through Rome. You had a direct parallel that the river of the beast would wage war and put to death the river of life. Wow. Brothers and sisters, prophecy is being revealed. But but praise be to God the Father that Jesus Christ had a plan that the devil couldn't understand but knew he would raise from the dead on the third day, conquering death, hell, and the grave, and putting Satan and his entire kingdom to an open spectacle, to an open shame. Because if the princes knew who it was they were killing, the Bible says, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Have you considered that it's not just talking about the princes as in earthly vessels of man that were ruling at that time but also the principalities and powers satan would have never wanted anything to do with crucifying the messiah if he knew what would happen in doing that you see so even though satan is still playing chess to this day he already lost the messiah already beat him on the cross but brothers and sisters you have to ask yourself if the dragon already lost ultimately why is he still playing chess in this last hour it's because he wants to take as many children of God with him to the lake of fire as possible mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. I want to show you what goes on in my mind But I don't think you can handle it And if I showed you what goes on in my mind The visions that I see in the night I'll show you what goes on in my mind Are you sure you can handle it? Showed you what goes on in my mind The dreams that I see in the night Now the beast been rising With teeth of lion Many people dying While the preacher's lying I warned about the mark But they keep denying it Till they lined up And now the serpent sees inside them And now the serpent sees inside them
small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Behold, I show you a mystery. Are you ready to connect the dots with me? Then let us begin. As we have told you over and over again, that the world is a stage and Hollywood is the magic wand of the dragon well, it just so happens to be that Janus Films handles the rights in all media to the extensive library. But we're just going to push that aside and move on to far more important topics. Remember in the beginning of the video, I told you that it was very foolish for YouTube to strike against us, forcing us to take down the original video. Because now, just like when you cut down bamboo, it only grows back thicker and stronger. We are now going to present to you the Janus connection to the abomination. And then we will move on to the topic of the dragon and the 12 Caesars. Remember in the beginning how that predictive programming, that lesser magic flooded with blue and yellow symbolism in the show, in the series, Utopia. You have to ask yourself the question, is it only about movies and shows or are these truly the tools that the dragon uses? to bewitch the minds of the people using the tell I vision. Remember, out of all names they could have used, why would they choose Janus to connect to the bite of the serpent in this TV show? And if you don't know what the bite of the serpent is, I really hope you'll figure it out. Because of the beast algorithm system, we can't use certain words when exposing the dragon. Do you think that is just a coincidence or they're just having fun? Or do you truly believe these were very precise in serious moves that were being executed on the chessboard of deception, planting into the minds of the masses what the beast was planning to do. What would be the odds that in our reality, not a TV show, but in real life, Janice, 
pops up his ugly two faces once again. Have you ever heard of the Janus nanoparticle? Notice the colors blue and yellow, blue and yellow. We're not gonna get all scientific and spend an hour going through this information. You have free will, be led of the Lord and do your own research. But what I wanna focus on is the progression through this game on the chessboard and the articles that were being published right before the eyes of the masses without them even noticing it. Notice it says that Janus nanoparticles, recent advances in their interfacial and biomedical applications. Notice it says the COV19 snakebite design the Janus face of immune enhancements. And you know, and they truly believe that Janus is the God of doors. What would be the odds that Janus would be directly connected to the abomination? And I was meditating on this in the spirit. And that's when it hit me. The reason why they have connected Janus to the abomination with the power of nanotechnology. And if they believe he is the God of doors, what is the dragon really saying? I believe the hidden message that they don't want brought to the light is they believe that this abomination connecting Janus is because they are opening up the door to the genome within mankind. They are unlocking that forbidden territory that they are not supposed to go into, which is the blueprint in the very book of everyone's life. That book is the DNA. So by choosing the name Janus dedicated to this pagan God, dedicated to this Roman pagan God of doors, they are declaring that they have opened up that forbidden door to the DNA, changing the very design and makeup, entering in and committing Haragma, cutting and etching and carving and changing the very genome. And instead of it being 10565, it becomes 156665, opening up that door and changing that double to a triple helix. Are you starting to see it? Now, this is the mystery that they don't want you to know. They are using this false God who they believe they are using. They have chosen the name Janus, this two-faced that they believe has the authority of doors. But we know Jesus Christ is the almighty that has the power to open any door that no one can shut and he can shut any door that none can open. But you see, it's all about confusion. It's mystery Babylon. So they have chosen Janus, this principality, as a way of boasting that they have opened up this forbidden door and gone to the very root of the tree of mankind. Are you starting to see it now? What would be the odds that there is a hill dedicated to Janus? 
Jenny Kaloum, I believe is how you pronounce it. And Janica Lynn Hill was the center for the cult of the Roman god Janus. But brothers and sisters, what would be the odds that it is said that Peter the Apostle was actually murdered and crucified in Rome on this very hill that was dedicated to Janus. And although Peter died for the Lord God Jesus Christ and would not bow his knee to no pagan deities, could it be possible that they murdered Peter as a sacrifice to Janus? But brothers and sisters, it goes deeper. Take a walk with me. Remember that it was revealed how the dragon raised up a Caesar in his own son of God referring to the devil. Not the son of God, Jesus Christ, but his own Caesar that would be a God man to rule at the very same time the Messiah is coming to the earth and it just so happens to be that there would be 12 Caesars just as Jesus Christ had his 12 disciples and remember the Caesar that was alive when Jesus Christ was murdered was Tiberius and what would be the odds that this was the very name of the son of this false god of this principality Janus and this Caesar with this very same name would be the one ruling on the throne of the dragon when the son of God would be crucified and killed I want you to watch this video and you tell me that the whole world isn't a stage. Brothers and sisters, you can't make this stuff up. That would give this country what it badly needs right now, a shot in the arm. So if this distribution of vaccines doesn't go according to plan, where does the buck stop? Me. Conversation's over. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Me. I hold myself 100% personally accountable to that end. On his whiteboard is one possible scenario. The all-important approval by the Food and Drug Administration of a vaccine developed by Pfizer, followed by approval of another from Moderna. What is D-Day? The day that we deliver the first round of vaccines. What is D-Day? The day that we deliver the first round of vaccine uh, for Pfizer. That's when it would start to get complicated because if approved, the Pfizer vaccine will require patients to receive two separate shots, 21 days apart. We know it's a two dose vaccine, so we want to ensure that we can manage the, the delivery of the first dose and ensure the delivery of the second dose uh, while we simultaneously integrate new rounds of doses being delivered to the American people. Are you ready to go if a uh, vaccine is approved tomorrow? Yes, we are. What's the first order you're going to give? It's a simple command of execute. It's a simple command of execute. So once you say execute, how fast does it get out there? Within 24 hours. Do you have doses of already stockpiled? Yes, we do. How many do you have stockpiled? I'm holding on to that number right now because I want to not create anxiety and we need to work through the details. A month from now, I'll have more.
shipment that was going to Good Samaritan Hospital in Baltimore? Yes. And not only that, I'll know after it gets there how fast they're administering the doses that they were given. Herna's ability to do that depends on a software program called Tiberius. which is supposed to link databases from across the government and the shipping companies into one unified picture that everyone can see. You can turn on where your hospitals are, where your pharmacies, your nursing homes, and where all of your enrolled providers are inside that, inside that jurisdiction. But when Deacon Maddox, a newly retired Army colonel, briefed Perna on how ready Tiberius is for D-Day, This capability didn't exist two months ago. So <laughs> there's some things that we need to work through. Deacon Maddox warned that once the starts flowing, the amount of data Tiberius has to keep track of will multiply. You mean to tell me that, of, that out of all names they could have chosen, they chose the very name that connects not only to the sun, of Janus, but also the very Caesar that was on the throne when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was crucified and murdered. What would be the odds that this would be the very name that they would label the very system that would implement the abomination to spiritually murder as many people as possible and wage war against the bride of Christ to attempt to try to hunt down the saints of God to try to destroy them the very same name the very same spirit the very same authority that was on the throne of the dragon when Jesus Christ died for us would be the name they use to try to cause as many children of God to die spiritually when taking the abomination. The whole world is a stage. And let's not forget that James chapter 1 verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways it literally means two minds and two spirited brothers and sisters you better get close to christ while you can And make no mistake about it, and don't let these false teachers lie to you. A person can fall from their grace, and a child of God can be deceived if they're not following the Messiah, and they're wandering into the ways of mystery Babylon. And they can actually worship the devil without even knowing it. They can actually participate in occult rituals and worship without even knowing knowing it because I know there's a whole lot of y'all right now that are feeling so convicted that you would be a part of a pagan ritual celebrating New Year's Eve without even knowing what you were doing but I thank God that he has messengers on the earth that will warn you of these things and to tell you to turn from the ways of Babylon to pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow the Messiah, the true way, the true alpha, the true omega, the true beginning and end. Janus is a counterfeit. Jesus Christ is the real. And let me explain something. You see, the dragon is very crafty and cunning. That's why he is the great deceiver. He knows he has been investigating and studying the prophecies from the beginning of time. From the very first prophecy in the beginning of Genesis. And every prophecy that was uttered after that. 
He knows about the titles of Christ. Remember that Lucifer worshipped Christ. He knows that Jesus is the Almighty. You're telling me he don't know no titles of Christ? He don't know the character of Christ? He came from heaven. He was casted out of heaven. Don't you think that one of the most deceptive strategies that the dragon can do was to cause mankind to build up false religions and false gods taking titles and positions that belong to Jesus Christ Yeshua the Messiah and putting them into these mystery religions so that way as time progressed people would deny Jesus Christ thinking oh he's he's not the true God there's other gods that have similar titles and similar characters that were before Jesus Christ came to the earth and they would fall for the lie but you see the very first prophecy is about the seed of the woman so nothing is before that Jesus Christ is the Almighty and if you don't repent and give your life to him the wrath of God will be upon you sooner than you think this is how strategic the dragon is even to the very names of the rulers that he was set up because he's a mocker and he is a blasphemer so everything from titles to places to names everything means something to the dragon everything and this is why he puts his subliminal messages in the lineup of the 12 months and we haven't even begun to talk about the days of the week holidays other than what we're going over now we don't have time on this video but I want to show you how many of you actually participated in and walked in through that dimensional portal and received the curse that you must have broken off of you at the end of this video and the one to do that is Jesus Christ Yeshua the Almighty he is the one that can break the curse I want to remember that in one of life's little islands a son went to work for the government whose betrayal was the father to kill himself Two-faced Roman God come to life. It's the um, the Roman God, Janice. My mother gave it to me when I was little. She wanted it to teach me that people have two sides: a good side, a bad side. Welcome to the Smite God Reveal for Janus, God of Portals and Transitions. Many fear change, venturing into the unknown, deviating from a path of safety and certainty into something unexpected. But life is change. A journey through doorways both physical and emotional, with every moment a passage to something new, and it is Janus, god of portals and transitions, that governs this. Bearing two faces, Janus is ever looking to the future and to the past, knowing both, but controlling neither. He is only the in-between, found in the changing of seasons, at the birth of a child, at the entrances to the temple and the tavern. For this reason, the Romans named the first month after him, January, a portal between the old year and the new. Yet the Roman emperors also attribute a strange tradition to Janus. At each end of his temple stand massive doors. In times of peace, these doors are closed, but in times of war, flung open. As Rome rose to power, rarely were these doors shut, but almost 400 years of peace have clothed Rome since then, and the temple has grown dusty with absence. These days, however, the doors are open once more. It seems war has returned, and the greatest of changes are upon us.
Janus's passive is called Passages. Anytime Janus transitions through a portal or over a threshold, he becomes aged and wizened, gaining magical power on his next ability cast. His first ability is called Portal. Janus places a portal in the world. If placed on a wall, the portal will create a passage through the other side of a wall that Janus or an ally may use. What if I told you that when they would celebrate the New Year's, they would pay homage to Janus and they would even give a promise to this false god of what they plan to do to serve him. Where do you think the New Year's resolution comes from? My question is, did you make a New Year's resolution? Because if you did, you were actually offering up a very ancient tradition to Janice to make a promise unknowingly to this principality. And did you know, do you know what the word libation means? It's a drink that is offered up to a deity. Do you know one of the main things they would do at the beginning of the new year? They would offer drinks to Janus. Wine. They would offer up wine to Janus. Why do you think so many people drink alcohol and pop bottles for the new year? You see? But this is where it really gets deep because Janus is called the door, the beginning and end when it comes to Mystery Babylon because we know who the real door is. We know who the real beginning and end is. However, this mystery, there's a mystery here that we're going to expose. Janus is also called the in-between because he's a middle ground. He's a middle space between beginning and end. And when they would celebrate the new year, they believed they would literally enter in and through Janus into the new year, hence being baptized into Janus. You remember those shows like Stranger Things and others like it where they would talk about a place called the in-between It was in between two dimensions and they could go there, but notice there were demons in this place called the in-between This is that demonic portal that opens up on New Year's Eve Because remember they believe because remember, this principality is called the doorway. 
into the new year. And if you're going to enter into something, you got to go through the door. So when people celebrate New Year's Eve, by default, whether they know it or not, they are participating in this ancient ritual and they are walking through Janus. The in-between. They are going through this dimensional, satanic, dark portal. And this is why so many people get cursed. Year after year after year. Things fall apart. Things get worse. Because people are not even realizing. They're participating. And not only this ancient ritual. But paying homage to a false god. That was raised up by the dragon. By the first Caesar, who was lifted as a demigod that would raise up this false god Janus as a direct insult and blasphemy and blasphemy against Jesus Christ. By raising up this ancient principality, the god of the gods, the door, the way, the beginning and the end, the one who holds the keys. These all be these titles all below all those titles belong to Jesus Christ. Did you know that on some of the coins, did you know that Janice was also depicted on a fishing boat? I mean, what mockery? What was one of the very first places that Jesus preached from? The fishing boat. But let's go a little deeper with it. Did you know that the very word janitor is offered up to Janus? Because janitors are the gatekeepers and they hold the keys, you see? But we know who the true key holder is. And I remember many years ago in a dream, the Son of God appeared to me. With a whole ring of keys. And he had a janitor outfit on. It is utterly amazing. That I'm seeing this revelation. See he knew back then. I wouldn't know it then. But there's a time and a place for everything. He is the true key holder. Not this counterfeit Janice. But wait brothers and sisters. It goes deeper. What if I told you. That if you got married, you notice that when people get married, they like to have that door behind them, that arch behind them. What if I told you that Janice was also worshipped as beginning and end of life and death and also marriage? That when pagans would be married, they would dedicate their marriage to Janice. My question is, how many of y'all listening to this message right now that are married actually had that doorway, that arch during their ceremony? You didn't even know it and you wonder why your marriage is where it's at. So we have to also include that in the prayer for you to renounce that curse to offer up your marriage to Janice. And you know, it makes me and it makes me wonder. This false god Janus had two faces. You ever heard that terminology? Oh, he or she was two-faced? Again, it's another reference to Janus. But it got me thinking. Could this be why there are so many people that are struggling with multiple personalities, schizophrenia. Could this have at least something to do with it? That if they unknowingly pay homage and worship to a false god, to a principality with two faces, could it cause a satanic door to open up in the minds of people to be like the one they worship? Remember, the Bible makes it clear when they worship and make sacrifices to idols, they become like unto them. Now, I want to stop for a moment as this video is coming to an end. And I want you and I to quickly recap 
this very important, life-changing information. Number one, remember that the great stumbling block of the dragon that is cast to the feet of mankind is a snare to try to cause as many as possible to swim in the cesspool of mystery Babylon. This means to cause the masses to be involved and practice the leaven of the whore riding the beast, the teachings of Babylon, to participate in these false religions, in pagan ceremonies, rituals, and many forms of worship. Remember one thing, you are expected that if you seek the Lord, follow after him, you will hear his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And if you hear his voice, you will know what to do. Even Paul said, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. This means that as he obeyed Christ, the Holy Spirit would lead and guide him into all truth. So please live for the Lord. Abstain from sin. Deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow after him. And I'm telling you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will be your shepherd. He will protect you from the crafty ways of the old serpent trying to cause you to stumble in this dark and wicked world. And I know some of you are overwhelmed and feel discouraged because you're like man of God. I feel like paganism is everywhere. How am I supposed to avoid it? Well, why don't you and I learn together? And as the Lord reveals more things, we will simply warn one another and as many as are around us that are willing to hear the truth. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. You see, a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And trust me, I know it's overwhelming. When the dragon, in his craftiness, has deliberately put layer upon layer upon layer when it comes to Mystery Babylon in this world, everything from the months of the year to the days of the week, to holidays, to even body parts that are named after false gods. There's so many things that I just don't have time on this video. And it goes on and on. But listen, if you are trying, if you deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow after him, you will hear his voice and he will keep you from being deceived. But you have to start by living for him to make sure that there is no legal ground for Satan to have over your life. So it starts with true repentance and giving your life to Christ, becoming born again, and getting washed by the blood that he shed on the cross, he will guide you on this journey of life, keeping you from stumbling in this dark and evil world. Okay? So don't be overwhelmed. And also don't stone and persecute those who don't have the knowledge that you are learning about the occult, whether it's family members, people you grew up with, or some that are on the job or wherever. Don't just start persecuting them and condemning them because they're blinded by the God of this world and they still celebrate New Year's and the holidays and pagan rituals unknowing. Start by telling them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Start by telling them about Christ himself because they're gonna remain blinded if you just give them a bunch of head knowledge. The important thing is to give them the truth of Jesus Christ and how much he loves them and how much he loves them enough to die for them and rise from the dead on the third day. And if they see it in your eyes that you believe, many will repent and in return, they will believe. And then you can expect them to know more about this tactic of mystery Babylon. So if you're going to warn people, so if you're going to practice what we do and warn people 
about the crafty ways of the devil because we are commanded to expose the devil. Make sure you're balanced and you start off by telling them about Jesus Christ. Okay? Now that that was said, remember the stumbling block is to try to trick you into paganism false religious ceremonies, and even worship, whether you know it or don't, you're still going to be held accountable according to the word of the Lord. Remember in the book of Acts, the minute those that were in the occult repented, they burned all of their books, all of their scrolls. They destroyed everything that had to do with the occult. You see? So avoid idolatry. Do not rush into anything, whether it's a trend online or no matter what it is. Take everything to the Lord. Because even the men of God in the book of Acts, because even the disciples, when they were traveling in the book of Acts, they tried to go into Asia, but the Holy Spirit wouldn't allow them. You see, they, they thought they were going the right way. You have to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And remember, brothers and sisters, we are in this together. And just because I am being used by the Almighty Christ to teach you, doesn't mean that I think I'm better than you. We're all here to glorify Christ. We're all here to lift up the Lord God Almighty, not our own personalities. So let's get, so let's continue in the battlefield against the Antichrist. And remember that stumbling block is to try to cause you to commit idolatry and to go whoring after false gods, paganism, and everything that has to do with the cesspool of mystery Babylon, that old whore, the mother of all whores. That means those who cheat on God, you could say. They go after other gods like Janus, you see? But brothers and sisters, the reality is, I want you to be more interested I want you to have a greater desire to learn about Christ more than you do when it comes to exposing the devil. What good is it to know all the things about the devil if you're not right with Christ? What good is it to know how to expose all the things of Satan if you're not right with Christ and you don't even love him enough to want to learn about him? So when you see other videos that are at the dinner table that are messages to help you learn more about Christ, make sure you click on those videos because the Father sees your heart. And we love y'all so much. Now, let's move on. I know I said I would be quick, but you know, you know me by now. That's, that's a tough thing for me. I'm not a TikTok or 60 second kind of brother. Although, we are trying to use social media to our advantage, so be on the lookout for that. Let's recap, shall we? Number one, if you did celebrate and participate in New Year's Eve, it is very important that you do the prayer that we will be doing very shortly. And you must sincerely repent and let the Lord know that you need help walking through this journey of life in this wicked, cold world where paganism is so many places. And yes or no, did I not reveal through Christ in the world is a stage part three that Satan is the deceiver. And this is what he does, you see? He deceived so many of you to participate in the New Year's Eve ritual. But brothers and sisters, there was a time I did not have this knowledge either. You see, we're all learning together. We can all repent together. We can all do better together. You see, we're one body. I just want you to be encouraged, not discouraged. Because after you repent, I truly believe that his children are going to try harder to seek his face and to trust him for discernment how to be aware of the devil's devices. Do not rush into anything. Bring everything to the Lord double check trends and things that are going on never feel forced 
to do something or to participate in something. I don't care if it's traditions of men. I don't care if your family members are offended because you don't want to do trick-or-treating because you want to warn them about these pagan rituals. If they want to be offended, then, then that will prove their love for you, won't it? Because if they're trying to hinder you from getting closer to the one who matters, they obviously need your prayers if they're able to be saved. So don't become a Pharisee. Be patient with those that are blinded. Was not Christ patient with us until our eyes opened? Do unto others as you would want done to yourself. Now, the Janus ritual is very evident that this is not a light thing. They've even put the actual message within the 12 months of the year. Now, there's something important that I wanted to talk to you about. One of the main things that I want to emphasize on is really not the is really not the New Year's ritual. You already get that and you're going to repent by the grace of God. Amen. But I want to emphasize on how fascinating it is, how accurate biblical prophecy truly is. The first prophecy ever uttered was in the book of Genesis. So any false gods of Egypt or Rome or Greek or any other false religion, whether from Asia, India or wherever, they're all spawned from the cesspool of mystery Babylon. There is only one way to the Father and that is through the Almighty Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So with that being said, you can be confident on that foundational promise that from Genesis, the father prophesied that his son would crush the head of Satan. And it isn't it interesting that the very place that Jesus Christ, the Almighty, died for our sins, that place where he hung on the tree, on the cross, was called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. So in reality, he literally did drive that wooden that wooden post from the tree into the ground symbolically crushing the head of the dragon how awesome is the god we serve but remember that that old serpent from the beginning of genesis has been moving through time trying to pay attention to the signs trying to figure out prophecy this is why he was off by about 40 years or so, but he raised up a Caesar who would be called a God-man just prior to the true son of God, the true son of man, the true ruler of heaven and earth, just prior to Jesus Christ being born into this realm through the womb of a virgin. Remember, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But I want to show you a part of the mystery that was kept until now. Remember that Julius Caesar was raised up onto a throne as a emperor. I know the word king is also used, but let's not get technical with that. And after him, and then the spirit of the Antichrist, that old serpent, would rise up the next throne which is a body a temple by the name of augustus caesar but here's the interesting thing what would be the odds brothers and sisters that the very caesar that would be on the throne when jesus christ came to the earth would be called son of god you see he believed that caesar was a god hence making him a son of god so you can see this absolutely fascinating prophetic revelation the war between good and evil you had jesus christ entering to the earth through the womb of a virgin remember the word became flesh son of god the true and rightful ruler of heaven and earth and Satan the old dragon that old serpent would rise up his own son of God 
at the same time the Son of God would arrive on the earth. Brothers and sisters, you can't make this up. This, this, anyone who says this is just coincidence, I feel sorry for them. They lack understanding. They lack spiritual understanding. And then, brothers and sisters, after Augustus Caesar, Tiberius Caesar would be the next temple that the Antichrist spirit would dwell inside, that old serpent would raise him up on the throne during the time of Jesus Christ dying for us and rising from the dead. Imagine that. And remember that his name meant, and it's the same name, of the son of the false god Janus. Well, at least it has the same definition from that river, Tiber, the one that runs through Rome. Remember, it's very simple, brothers and sisters. It was Rome. It was the power, kingdom, and authority of Rome that had Jesus Christ put to the cross. Of course, he allowed it. But if it is Rome that is responsible of course, all mankind, we know that. We know the synagogue of Satan was also involved. We know the Pharisees and the crowd shouted, crucify him. But the authority, you see, that beast system was Rome. You see, that's why it had to be this particular Caesar, Tiberius, because his name is, is referenced to the Tiber River that runs through the very kingdom that is responsible for being under the authority when Jesus Christ was falsely accused, beaten to a bloody pulp and nailed to a cross. And of course, it was victory and it was meant, but there is still blood on the hands of this empire. And this is why God the Father has raised back up that spirit of Rome in the end of the days to punish Mystery Babylon. Remember, this is an ancient spirit, not just a land mass, my brothers and sisters. I pray those who have ears to hear can hear this. But what if I told you there's something else that you need to know that's very, very important? Behold, I show you a mystery. I got a question for you. When the real Son of God came to the earth when God the Father sent his son the true son of God to the earth how many disciples did Jesus Christ call forth 12 correct now we know one was a traitor but he was plucked up and another took his place but ultimately 12, are we in agreement? All right. What, what would be the odds that the dragon would establish this throne in the same season the Messiah was coming to the earth? It's like the dragon was paying attention to the prophecies, but he was off by a handful of years. What would be the odds that there are 12 Caesars. <laughs> you have Julius Caesar, Augustus, Tiberius, Caliglia, Claudius, Nero, Galba, Otho, Vitalius, Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. Imagine that. Jesus Christ, Son of God, sent by the Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, commissioned 12 apostles. That dragon, that the dragon, the old serpent, raised up Caesar, raised up Julius Caesar, by the power of the Antichrist, in return raised up 12 Caesars in total. The dragon raised up his demonic disciples. And I truly believe that this, the spirit of the world, Mystery Babylon, infiltrate, has infiltrated 
the nations of the world. And although there are many kings and many false religions that are playing very big roles in the end times game on the chessboard of deception, as far as that old ancient spirit of Caesar, I believe it is still in the heart of Rome. Brothers and sisters, why don't we stop here? I'm sure as you meditate, may the Lord reveal things to you that maybe I wasn't able to mention or didn't even know. This is just a small video as we get ready to release other messages to show you how real the war between good and evil really is. And, and we will go in other videos, we have to go over the scriptures on how severe it is to participate in pagan rituals, ceremonies and worship, whether you do it knowing or unknowing. It really doesn't matter because you can perish because of a lack of knowledge. But if you would just serve the Lord, if you would just follow him, if you would just read your word and pray without ceasing, fast when you're led to, fellowship and gather with the children of God, if you would just live for Christ, he will keep you from falling. He will protect you from the crafty deception of the dragon in this last hour. His sheep hear his voice. Remember that. I want you to pray with me. Come on, brothers and sisters, it's time to repent. I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Almighty, please forgive me of all sins that I've ever committed, known and unknown. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I repent from any participation. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I repent for getting involved with any pagan rituals, any ceremonies of mystery Babylon, for any type of worship to false gods. Lord, I repent and I renounce all of the occult. I reject everything that has to do with mystery Babylon. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, close that demonic portal. I renounce the Janus worship of the new years. I do not dedicate my life. I reject the dedication of this pagan new year. And Lord, may I learn your ways and study your word and know your holy days and know when the year starts to you, O oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, break these curses off of me. Please, O oh God. And for you brothers and sisters that are married and you got married at that archway of Janus, say, Lord, break the curse of Janus off of my marriage. I dedicate my marriage to the true door, which is Jesus Christ. And I renounce the false door of Janus. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I am in this world, but I don't want to be of this world. And any pagan things that I don't know about, that I may be involved with, show me, Lord God. Show me your ways and expose the deceitful tactics of the enemy. Father, I trust and believe that through your blood, I am forgiven, Lord Jesus Christ. That through the blood of the Lamb, I am, I am now made righteous and have peace with God the Father. I repent of all idolatry. I reject everything to do with Satan's kingdom. Lord, give me an increase of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give me a hunger and a thirst to seek your face and to study your word and to learn your ways. Lord, 
I want a greater relationship with you. That you will lead and guide me into all truth. And I declare right now that every curse that came in through the celebration of the New Year's, every curse that came in through all paganism, whether I knew it or I didn't, I declare right now it to be broken off my life in Jesus Christ's name. That I am set free because who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Lord Jesus Christ, keep me from falling. And I love you so much. All praise, glory, and honor to the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we got so many videos we got to get done. We love you all so much. Pray for us as we pray for you. We thank you for all your prayer and support spreading these messages, warning as many people as you can to give their life to Christ and about what is happening on the earth. Stand firm in this last hour. In Jesus Christ's name, we love you all. The blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood. Riding on a horse, a white one with glory, hallelujah. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the faithful judge, the word of God, my God, my Lord, I praise you. He's the Son of man, the Son of God, the living God, the righteous judge, holy. Jehovah El Shaddai He's the Prince of Peace, the Waymaker, the Bishop of our souls, the Creator I bow to you, I worship you, Nyasae yes,